Uh, Chris, what, what uh, adjustments did, did you guys make in that uh, in that second half to be able to, to pull away? And what did you see from your guys from an execution standpoint that really helped you all get the win today? Uh, adjustments defensively. Um, is it Levi or Levy? I'm not sure, but he's a dynamite player. You know, he's one of the best assist guys in all college basketball. So um, we tried to pressure him a little bit more in the second half. I'll have to watch the film to see if we were effective, but it, it was a focal point. Um, change one coverage on a ball screen, but uh, really the adjustments were on the offensive end. A lot of our turnovers were coming first catch, first pass. We wanted to just settle down. You know, I, um, it's like, you know, you, you're at the rainbow and you're looking for the pot of gold. Sometimes you just got to hang out at the rainbow. And the pot of gold might not be there for a minute. And um, Joe Golding taught me that. And um, so a lot of our turnovers were happening. We were being so aggressive early. So an adjustment we made was just make a couple passes and see if we can't get into mid clock and play a little bit better. And that's what we did. We won the game tonight with our defense. We shot 50% in the second half, got to the free throw line, I think had a three or four turnover half. So that was good. Um, we just got to get that consistency. You know, we get in a big 12 and we, we don't put two halves together. You know, it's not going to be our, our day in Lubbock. So, um, but those were the adjustments at halftime. Take care of the ball, be a little more patient. And, and uh, we had a lot of respect for their point guard. What did you see from Jemias in his first game back in, in a couple of weeks? Well, good. I saw him being aggressive. He didn't look like a guy that came out there and he was trying to kind of fit in again. That was the whole idea. Spent a lot of time with him, talking to him, making sure he understood his job, the expectations, what we want. I think a lot of times people come back from time off, um, injury, suspension, whatever, and it takes you a while. So we, we wanted, it was an objective for our whole team, not just Ramsey, for him to, to get in there. Um, you know, I would mention something, uh, I'd mention this to you guys. Uh, it's one of the most unselfish acts I've had in X years of coaching my whole career. Uh, Chris Clark reached out to me personally and said, look, I just want to win. Uh, I'd, I'd really prefer to come off the bench. I think this is what our team needs. And, you know, I ultimately made the decision, but for Chris to make that, that that's what you want. That's unselfishness. That's team basketball. That's how you win. So I want to recognize Chris again for, for that. Now, whether what we do with our lineup is yet to be determined. You guys understand our lineup changes from time to time. And we're always doing what we need to do. But that was the decision tonight. It was really Chris's decision in, in a roundabout way for Ramsey to get back in that lineup. And as a coach, that's what you work for. When you have unselfish, talented people, you have a chance. And last one from me, but Kevin McCullough, it seems like he's come along so far defensively, especially. What have you seen from him on his growth on that side of the ball? And I mean, how effective do you see him being for your team in the long run, especially with conference play coming up? Yeah, same message with Mac. You know, I'll be consistent. Uh, he's a very talented player. He's, he's overcome a lot of adversity. He has not had an off season at Texas Tech. Um, he's been in that weight room, but has never been 100% just cleared to go get it. Uh, he is now, but he's also trying to play at this level, the BCS level, as a freshman. So, um, you know, we all see the talent. A night tonight, you know, uh, he, he was the best player on the floor for different segments. So, um, as he works, his opportunity will continue to increase. Um, you know, there's also just that window of improvement. A lot of the plays around the basket, he gets there with his talent. He just has to learn how to, you know, play with his strength. And a lot of it is just uh, inexperience. He needs more game time. We're working hard to get it for him. Uh, but he's a talented guy. Again, you know, playing at this level with no off season. So it's, it's pretty impressive what he's doing. Following up on McCuller, uh, when he was tied at 34 all, he really was kind of the catalyst to get you guys going on your run. Yeah, we have a lot of confidence in all of our players. Uh, we tell them you've got you've to answer when your name is called. It's hard for these guys to do. I tell these guys, I mean, I, you know, you're in a situation where um, you're going from being the best player on your team, playing the whole game. Now you're trying to get into the college mold. It's tough, and it's that fine line between being aggressive and staying confident, but also – you know, time and score. Let me let me hang in here and help the team a little bit. And um, all those guys. You know, Dre has played some great basketball this first semester. Uh, Russ has done some big time things. Uh, Clarence is right there. Uh, you know, made pound for pound one of the toughest guys I've ever coached. And Max playing really good today was a great example. So um, those guys are in situations where they have to continue to be aggressive and work for time, but they've also got to play the game when they're in there for us to win. It's not an easy situation to be in, uh, but all great players have been in it. Uh, you know, Jarrett Culver was in that situation. Morrow was in that situation as young players. So um, I think all those freshmen have done a good job. 
now we need him to grow up quickly. You know, I've said this before. At what point aren't you, aren't you a freshman? You know, um, those guys have played minutes. They've played games. And as we come back, we expect and need those guys to play big in the Big 12 for us to be successful. So in my mind, they're not really freshmen anymore when we return on Christmas Day to practice. Coach, just going back to Ramsey, I guess when did you get the green light for him to be able to play the game? And then uh, I guess how much practice time did he get before that? Yeah, Carlos, I'm not good on days. What, what is today? Uh, Saturday. Today's Saturday. And uh, we played our last game when? Monday. So I think on Wednesday, uh, he worked really hard on Tuesday, our day off. I did some individual stuff. And um, you know, with the doctors and trainers, we all felt confident. And the final piece is getting with him and making sure he was where he needed to be mentally, and he was. You know, he's been there for weeks. Uh, and so we made that decision. I, he practiced full-time Wednesday, Thursday. Yesterday was a walk-through day. And so um, that decision was made on Wednesday. And I guess for you, I guess I know you said you talked to him to kind of get his head right. I guess did, did you have a minute? Uh, I, I guess did, what, were, did you have a minute limit on him, or I guess what, what was kind of the expectation from the coach? No, side? we're not really big into load management around here. We, we're just trying to win the next game on the schedule. Um, that's a good question. We This is my whole idea of him being 100% cleared when he got back. If we would have chosen to play him earlier, then – but I, I just – I don't like doing that, man. These young guys are talented and they got futures ahead of them. So, I, I'm not going to play players unless they're 100%, unless it's a special thing with an older player in a game. You know, like the national championship game uh, last year, Tariq, you know, he, he wasn't supposed to play in that game, but he – you know, that guy was as tough as they come, and he made that decision, and I supported it. But in things like Ramsey's been going through, I'll never play a player unless they're 100% clear by the doctor and trainer. That's just how we roll around here. Last one. I guess uh, in terms of Ramsey, obviously he kind of sparked you guys early on. I guess in that second half, what was he able to do to kind of get the guys kind of rolling with those 13 points in that second half? For you? you know, without watching the film, I thought our press breaker was good tonight. We struggled a little bit in that last game against Southern Miss, breaking the press. I appreciate the 17 friends that texted me after the game and told me that. I, I understand. Um, and so we got that fixed in practice. I thought our press break was really good tonight. And uh, I think that opened up the floor a little bit. And uh, without watching the film, I think Ramsey scored three baskets on the press breaker. So, you know, credit to his teammates for the passing and spacing and credit to everybody in practice, you know, working hard to get that press breaker fixed tonight. What percentage of the time did your guys play hard enough to satisfy you today? Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. Uh, five. Okay. And last question for me. Um, when they were digging you guys up. 5% uh, of a 40 minute game is what, how many minutes? What, eight minutes? No, that's not right. That's, I'm not a mathematician. Two. Two. Yeah. You're, you're an Ivy League. <laughs> you're an Ivy League guy? Not ex I didn't graduate from an Ivy League school. Okay. okay, okay. <laughs> I've been some spent some time up there, but um. is it two two minutes? <laughs> Five percent of forty is that's beyond me, man. Well, I know my high school buddy Indo doesn't know. I mean, that's obvious. Two two minutes. Okay, but um, when they were digging you guys up on the offensive glass uh, yeah. in the second half, uh, any thoughts to play in uh, some, uh, Big Russ a few minutes? Um, yeah, um, maybe could have helped us a little bit. You know, I don't like to put guys in those situations where we're trying to, to win the game, but that's good thought. We, um, I thought really what was happening was rotational blockouts more than anything. I didn't think it was really like one guy getting beat by one guy. Again, back to their point guard and Jackson's a good player, 22 and they're breaking us down. We're having to help. They shoot it. We have the rotational blockout. So that necessarily isn't a size thing. That's a. That's a rotational thing. So that's what I was seeing with my naked eye.